In this tutorial you will learn how to install and configure FileZilla server for Windows. Download FileZilla server from FileZilla website. Confirm you want to allow it to make changes to your device. You need to accept the terms. Select what to install. Normally you want both the server and the administration interface to configure it. By selecting the start menu shortcuts or desktop icons, the installer will add links to the administration interface and to start or stop the server. Browse and choose where to install it or just click next and get it installed in the default location. Choose a start menu folder or enter one. FileZilla server is installed as a Windows service and you can start it manually or automatically. The checkbox to start the server after the setup completes is selected by default, deselect it if you want. You have to set the port on which FileZilla server will listen to connections from the administration interface. The FileZilla server port used to serve client connections is set later. Choose your administrator password and enter it. Retype it to confirm it. If you don't set a password, for security reasons you can configure only servers responding on localhost. The administration interface can be set to start automatically for every user, for the current user or manually. The installation is complete, you can now start configuring FileZilla server. The connection dialog requires you to enter the host, that might be either an IP address or a host name, a port number and your password. If you installed FileZilla server locally, the host will be listening on the localhost IP 127.0.0.1. The administration server will be listening on port 14148, unless during the installation you change the default value. If you set a password enter it. If you want to avoid retyping it select the checkbox. If you want the administration interface to connect automatically to that FileZilla server instance select the checkbox. To create a user click on the add button, choose a name for the user and select the type of authentication. You can allow the user to access the server with or without a password, or using system credentials. For example, you can set slash as virtual path, associate a native path to it and set the permissions you like. In this video you learned how to install FileZilla server and how to create your first user. In this tutorial you will learn more about FileZilla server's user types and how to use placeholders to define native paths. When you create a user, you can use the special user called system user. The system user can impersonate any user already available on the operating system. In this case you can only use system credentials to log in. System credentials consist of a username and a password of a local user. You can also select the Use System Credentials also for Accessing Files and Directories checkbox, to grant the user the same access privileges that are associated with their host operating system account. To enable anonymous access to your server, create a user and select Do not require a password to log in. If you don't want to use the operating system's user accounts but you want users to authenticate, select the option Require a password to log in. Then write the password in the next field and communicate that to the user through a secure channel. Placeholders are variables that can be used to define native paths. There are two types available. Colon H gets replaced with the absolute path corresponding to the home directory of the system user logged in. Colon U gets replaced with the name of the user logged in. It might be useful to define groups. In the example, the users belonging to the group would have slash pointing to their respective FTP home directories. In this video you learn more about FileZilla server users and how to configure them. In this tutorial you will learn how to generate a TLS certificate via Let's Encrypt in the administration interface log in using your credentials. Go to the server menu and select Configure. On the left click on Let's Encrypt. Check the checkbox to enable Let's Encrypt certificate generation. If you don't already have a Let's Encrypt account, you need to create it. Click on the Generate New Account button. You need to input at least one contact URL and specify which ACME protocol directory. The URL in this case must be an email address, which must begin with mail to colon. The ACME directory might be either Let's Encrypt Production, Let's Encrypt Staging or a custom one. Let's Encrypt recommends testing against their staging environment before using their production environment. Select Custom if you want to use a provider that is compatible with Let's Encrypt. Accepting Let's Encrypt terms is mandatory. Click on the link to learn more. Let's Encrypt generates your certificate. 
To prove that the domain name for which you are requesting the certificate is under your control you need to select a challenge method. You can either use an internal, minimal web server created on the fly by FileZilla server, or use an already running web server whose file system FileZilla server has access to. Go to Protocols Settings, FTP and FTPS, and in the Connection Security tab from the TLS Certificate top-down menu, select Use Let's Encrypt Certificate. Click on the Generate New button and enter one or more host names. Then click the OK button. The internal web server must be reachable from the internet. Make sure that the IP addresses associated to your host names are properly routed to the FileZilla server. If everything works you'll get the certificate. Click the OK button to start using the new certificate. The log will show that a new certificate has been generated. FileZilla server is fast and reliable and it supports FTP and FTPS. Download it from FileZilla website, where you can also buy the manual. Stay tuned for the next tutorial videos.